Thanks for yeah. joining today. What's going on, dude? Man, I'm excited to be here. Thanks well, for having welcome. me. Welcome to On the Road to Rock. You are uh, just, this is a tremendous honor to have you, Omar Doom, on the show, who's lamenting quite a summer here of, of music release and some live shows, as I understand it. Just talk about it. I mean, this has been an incredibly busy summer, uh, which yeah. is always a good thing as you release Straight Razor <laughs> Volume 2. It's been out now since, I think, June. So what's the reception been like now that it's had a you know chance to, to marinate here for a few months? I've actually had a good response to everything. Um, a lot of positive responses on online and reviews. Uh, something just came out in the new magazine, new issue of Rue Morgue. And uh, I think there's a review in there. I haven't read it yet, but, and uh, so, yeah, I, I released volume two in, in uh, a couple months ago. Yep. And following that, I put out vinyl, which you can see right behind me, which has volume one and volume two. Very cool. And an awesome cover there, which is sort of you depicted as, as a, in, in a bit of a Romanian Dracula type pose there. And the, 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 the let's face it, the album is, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's atmospheric. It's kind of brooding. It's got some real, uh, man, some real dark tones to it. I just think that this is a, maybe the, a big challenge. Take us through this because to create music the way you do, an instrumental album, which is, you grew up playing so many different instruments, but to kind of put this together and to make an album out of it, not just release singles and, and, and hearing a song here or there, and an album that's got to kind of connect. The songs kind of mean something together when, when played in an order, the same as say Led Zeppelin two would. So just talk about the challenges of that when you're trying to create an atmosphere or create a tone or a theme when you're doing these kind of instrumentals. Well, the mood is really what I start with. Um, I mean, I actually start with the drums, but, but even before that, there's a mood that I have in mind. And uh, I usually don't know exactly what it's gonna be in the end. Fortunately, I always surprise myself in a good way. And, uh, you know, there's been a couple of happy accidents here and there, but, but for the most part, you know, I made exactly the songs I wanted to make. And there's a dark atmosphere that kind of looms over everything I do. Um, and it's always been there since I was young. So um, even if I tried to, <laughs> it just turns out sounding like this. Well, I think that the, I like music that puts me in kind of a, a time or a place or it's like, I, 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 I mean, obviously you're, you're also an actor and you've been a producer and been a part of soundtracks. So you'll understand this. But when I, when I hear a lot of these songs and like specifically a song uh, like enemy, it just put, it's like, I can automatically picture a scene and you can, you're just feel free to use this if this ever comes up. But I, I picture like a scene in a movie where it's like a dark underground nightclub and like two cops are waiting through a crowd of people trying to find a, a criminal or something that's holed out in the, in this club and there's yeah. gunshots fired and people flying. Like it just puts me in this, it automatically puts me in, in this kind of moment. I mean, is that kind yeah. of, what you go for and is that something that you've kind of thought about along the way yeah well before i answer that there actually was a lot of comments on my page from different people saying that it should be in the next john wick movie okay well so i kind of nailed it there maybe yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh so yeah i mean that song i was actually very angry when i wrote it um no be well because i was having trouble uh with my hearing and uh, which I lost a lot of hearing in my right ear uh, right before I started making it. And so it was hard uh, to, it was the first song I had made since the hearing loss. So it was, it was really difficult to get the mix right. Interesting. So that's something that uh, has, has befallen uh, many artists uh, in just the past several years. I think Huey Lewis experienced it and it's been very tr troubling. So how's, How's that been going? I mean, obviously not something that just comes back. You're just sort of uh, living in this world now with suffering from the hear hearing loss. And yeah, well, it has that loud ringing too. <laughs> like tinnitus. I have a little of that myself on a smaller scale. Like uh, it's, it's not ringing. It's like a pounding, like a bass drum. Pretty sure Slayer actually is to blame for this. And I'm not kidding. Like a, after I left a Slayer concert, like a snare drum never went away in my inner yeah. ear. So yeah, well, I, I mean, I grew up playing drums with sure. cymbals 
yeah. right by your ear. But I'm not complaining. I mean, this is part of being a musician. It's going to happen eventually to people. Um, yeah, and I, I was able to get through it. You know, I made a song that I was really proud of. Yeah. And, and yeah, so, I mean, I guess it didn't faze me. I love the album. I love what you've done. Now you've been able to unveil this over the summer, as I understand it, in, in a live setting. Just kind of talk about what that's been like, what people can expect when they come see uh, Omar Doom live and what else you have coming up. If there's plans for kind of more shows coming up in 2022 or what's going on with that? There's going to be remixes coming out. Um, I'm not sure yet, but they're, they're still being made. Uh, remixes by people of Straight Razor. And uh, that's going to be the next release. Wow. Yeah. Very exciting. When what And what about live shows? What What it's going to kind of, is that still on the horizon? Still have more of that? Oh, yeah. I definitely want to do more of that. I have nothing planned right now. I kind of wanted to space things out a little bit, but uh, I'll probably get back on that soon. So stay tuned for more uh, updates on omardoom.com. What are, I also what... just started a new Instagram just for straight razor. Okay. Official straight razor. Official straight razor. Yeah, because I was seeing your nor uh your just personal one here. So there's an one for the album, straight razor. That's amazing. So what were the shows like this summer? Where, where did you mostly around the LA area? What what was what was it like? What's the atmosphere like at an Omar Doom show? Uh well, it was actually in New York, Philadelphia, Nashville, Detroit, Portland. Uh, um I'm missing one, Sacramento. So I did actually go across the country and back. Yeah. And uh, there were people there that knew my songs, you know, and uh, they, it was nice to hear them cheer when, when songs were starting, you know, and uh, so the word's getting out there. What, what does it mean to you to, to be in a position like this, to, to release albums of songs that you've created? Obviously you, you know, you're grew up a, a musician. That's what you probably, you are first, probably identify as first. You obviously yeah. have achieved fame in, in the acting world um, along with several Quentin T Tarantino films, but just the, the set the satisfaction, the career satisfaction of being able to, to do this and to do it successfully and to come out with this album. It just has to be a whole different level of gratification, doesn't it? Well, I'm glad to have these songs out there because mm -hmm. I really wanted them out there for quite some time. Some of them are a little older than others. Enemy's brand new. I made that right yep. before. Obviously. Um, and so I'm really happy that they're out there and that I don't have to think about them anymore because I can only think about the new stuff now. Like that's kind of a relief. Um, I'm really happy with it, of how it came out, you know, but I'm happy that I can move on now. So interesting. So you're kind of one that's doesn't look back much. You're just kind of always evolving, always next thing, next project. That's yeah, I'm going to okay. do, I'm probably going to do a full album for Straight Razor. So, yeah. Sweet. Uh, that's tremendous. Um, I got to ask you about soundtracks because you've been a part of some soundtracks before. Obviously, Quentin Tarantino, he's got to be one of the better, most eclectic uh, directors when it comes to formulating a, a, a soundtrack. Have you guys ever just talked about soundtracks and the the intricacies of of how I songs can work in a in a movie and how that we Important we have talked, we have talked about that actually he does something really interesting he said this uh, to the public i can say it but um he when he starts a movie he listens to music first he goes into his record room and starts finding the beat of the movie so that that's that's really that was really interesting for me wow I, that is the true essence of of artistry right there and that just I, death proof makes so much more sense now that's great that 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 soundtrack in particular is probably my favorite one that he ever did that's your first movie there and i actually made the mistake of telling it i was in college when death proof came out omar and i made the mistake of using your line telling a girl in that whimpery voice i just want to make out it didn't work for me it did for you though <laughs> in the film so i I'm, i've harnessed a grudge all these years i just i got you on this show for that purpose to just tell you that that just does not work for the average person, Omar. Come on. <laughs> I love that scene though. In the script, I do uh, kiss her. We didn't end up filming that, but yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's I'm a great to hear that though. I'm sorry that's, to hear no, that. No, it's okay. I, 
I, I rebounded, you know, I, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's all part of the experience, all part of growing up, all part of life. So uh, it's all good there. So, you know, as, as we, you know, this, this last couple of years has been so crazy, man. So do you think that pandemic more downtime, did that sort of guide you in, in the direction you talked about being angry? A lot of people were angry the last yeah. couple of years. Was that, is that sort of the antithesis, the genesis of some of these songs too? Yeah. I mean, there's kind of an end of the world kind of vibe in enemy. I think it's, I, you know, like, yeah. what are we going to do now? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I can definitely tell. I like that. Um, so you, you kind of grew up though, playing in more and harder rock bands. You're kind of a metal guy, right? Yeah. At, at, at its heart. So what, what, what are you listening to growing up? And that's probably a, a loaded question, but what, what kind of bands yeah. are you listening to that are influencing you? I was big on the Ramones when I was like an early okay. teenager. I followed them like the Grateful Dead, you know, like I just saw, I was able to see them, you know, in the late eighties, early nineties in, in small bars, like with people just going crazy. It was just wild. When they play, it's like a freight train. It is so loud, hard, and fast. It was just something that I wish I could experience again. Um, so anyway, so I was listening to stuff, a lot of stuff like that, Misfits, Ramones. And uh, as my neighbor was really into metal and we used to skate together. And I'm a skateboarder. And he was really into metal, like Metallica, mm -hmm. AC, DC, Iron Maiden. And so we kind of like were introducing music to each other. And uh, so I started listening to metal then. And then from metal, I started, you know, there was moved to industrial and uh, from industrial, I moved to dance music, you know, techno house, you know, and uh, that was that that's the chronology of my uh, music. And you can kind of hear that it's like it all in some ways manifests itself in some ways yeah. in what you do. And I think that that's what's great about hard rock music is that it's sort of derived from dark, dark uh, classical music anyway. So that music lives on. It can live on as, synth as synthesizer music, as kind of doomy, gloomy type music. That's that's what's great. It can it can ma manifest itself in many ways. I think it has in your work. I actually love doom metal, and the name is just a coincidence because I named it's myself Omar Doom you before that name came out. I think that there's a patent involved there that we <laughs> need to make sure that you're that that's yeah that should be all you. That that should be royalties for you just for that. Um, do, you, do you remember what your first concert was? Was it the Ramones? Was that your first show ever? No, I was in fifth grade. I saw uh, Guns N' Roses uh, at the Spectrum in Philly, and they were opening for Aerosmith. My dad's like me. like eighty seven. That was a exactly a tour there. So you grew up. So you grew up in Philly. Yeah. No, I grew up in like an hour and a half from Philly. Okay. In Lehigh Valley. I grew. I was born in Easton, Pennsylvania. It's like an hour from New York. And, so, uh, man, that's that's pretty good for a show. Your dad yeah, took and you, then, and then his parents took us to the Metallica and Justice for All tour show at the Stabler Arena in Bethlehem. That was pretty cool. That's because they had the whole. Good the big uh, woman with the scales. It know, fell apart she, during one. Yeah. Yeah, she crumbled. We were, we were, you know, I was like pretty young. So it was all, like, God, I want to say thing is we were, <laughs> we were all the way in the bleachers and there wasn't that many people around us. There was a couple of families here and there, but me and my friend were like, we have to headbang the whole time. You know, <laughs> they were just like, like beautiful and butthead, like <laughs> the whole time. And I would look around sometimes and people would just be like, Oh my God, look at them. <laughs> it was, we probably looked hysterical. Oh, that's that tour though. That was, uh, I think, I think Queensryche opened a lot of that. You, they, you might not remember they the did. opener, but they did. Booed so hard. Really? Yeah. People really want it. Metallica fans can be brutal. Like they, yes. want Metallica and they don't want anything else. You know, it, it was a weird time for Metallica, though. It was like they were just starting to sort of elevate into the mainstream. And so, like, I could see where, like, a band like Queensryche, who had, I think, just done Operation Mind Crime, I don't think they'd done Empire yet. They still, it's, I, you would have thought it could have been a little more even. I mean, God, we're just, a, we were just a few years away from Metallica playing like the uh, Monsters of Rock with like Van Halen and Dawkin. So it was around that time that they just started heading onto another stratosphere, probably yeah. untouchable at that time. So, yeah. That was, yeah. 
<laughs> that was probably a, just a bad timing there for poor Queens, right? So, oh, uh, that is that is amazing. So you you're from that area. Are you, are you a sports fan at all? Football season just kicked off. There's a lot of teams. Penn State, Philadelphia Eagles, Pittsburgh Steelers. Anything you fan of any I, of that? I watch a lot of like motorcycle racing. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm into that. And you're a skateboarder, so maybe more extreme sports for you. Well, I watch a lot of skateboarding, of course. Well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's that you're kind of a renaissance man, Omar. Let's let's be honest. Like you kind of cover it all. You're like a renaissance man. Well, that, that I've heard that before. Okay. I don't know how much I can really say about that about myself. I don't know if I ever want to call myself a renaissance man. It's sort of ha- yeah, now that I think about it, like it's supposed to be like a so, you know, it's supposed to be a very dignifying thing and very, very positive, but it's, it comes off as a little strange when you hear it out loud. You're I'm a oh. renaissance man. Like you're supposed to be like wearing like suits and. Yeah. I don't want to come up as arrogant. <laughs> you're, t- you're anything but that. So what else is coming up? What else you got? Um, any acting gigs? What else? What else we got coming up here? Well, uh, there's no uh, solid acting gigs I can talk about right now. But uh, I have written a couple horror scripts, and my plan is to combine all of those talents with soundtrack writing and directing a movie, which is going to be, which is going to happen. So that's perfect because I I see so much in in your work that is, and I'm a horror just nut. So I've been like, I heard there's a new movie that's come out called Barbarian. Everyone's kind of talking about that's the one that's got some buzz. So I don't know if you've seen it yet. Justin Long's in it. it. I haven't seen it. Um, I got to see Brad's movies first. There's, there's, uh, you know, Babylon, which is coming out. Right? I heard that's awesome. Yeah, there you go. And Bullet Train. Like, I, I need to see those two first. Okay, so you got that on the horizon. Um, got it. Okay, well, Omar, this is just, it's just been an honor. This is great. Uh, I just <laughs> can't thank you enough for, for coming on On the Road to Rock here to talk about the new album and to talk about everything that's going on in, in your world, Straight Razor Volume 2. It's out now. Check it out. And as always, the website, omardoom.com. Yes? Yes. That's easy enough. Very easy. There's lots of links there. You can go to different stuff or try out the new Instagram, Official Straight Razor or Omar Doom. I'm going to do all those things, sir. I'm a good listener. I will do it. Omar, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day, sir. And we'll uh, catch up soon, my man. Thank you. Talk to you soon. You bet.